Let's go through the images of the heart from the APR worksheet. There are three pages for the APR worksheet for this chapter. First, complete the worksheet on your own. Once you have completed it to the best of your abilities, come back and watch the remainder of this video. The first page will go over the, this, these images of the heart. So we'll find the right atrium. The right atrium is located here, right atrium. Left atrium is over here. We can actually see pulmonary veins entering the left atrium. The superior vena cava is entering the right atrium from up there. I don't have inferior, but the inferior vena cava is there. So I can see, and this is superior vena cava. The aorta is here, and the pulmonary trunk, I'll just put PA for pulmonary artery, it's also known as the pulmonary trunk. Papillary muscle, that can only be found inside the heart, so we actually see a little papillary muscle here, and this is another papillary muscle. They are actually attached to chordae tendinae, which are strings, they're not on this list, but they should be. The interventricular septum is the meaty tissue between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. So the interventricular septum is this region here between the two. The apex of the heart is this bottom portion, as well as here and here. The right coronary artery we see coming off the aorta going to the right side of the heart. The coronary sinus is on the posterior side of the heart, and it's where all the veins are going to drain into, and then the coronary sinus delivers the deoxygenated blood directly into the right atrium. The left anterior descending artery is coming down the inter, right above where the interventricular septum would be. It supplies primarily the left ventricle. The left circumflex artery actually comes wrapped around, since this is a posterior view, we see the circumflex as it's wrapping around the lateral side coming to the posterior side. So this would be the left circumflex. The next set of images will again try to identify the right atrium. Here's the right atrium again. The superior vena cava brings blood into the right atrium from the upper limbs and the head. The aorta is where blood is ejected from the left side of the heart. We don't see that side, but we do see the aorta, and it's sitting immediately behind the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary artery. We see a semilunar valve. In this case, the semilunar valve happens to be the pulmonary semilunar valve. The tricuspid valve is right here. It is also known as the right atrioventricular valve. And again, the apex of the heart is this inferior portion. The last page shows our electrophysiology as well as the cardiac cycle. You should know the sinoatrial node is a pacemaker of the heart. It will depolarize across the right atrium as well as the left atrium. Then it causes the atrioventricular node to depolarize where there's a slight delay, and then the impulse goes down the bundle of his, and then simultaneously through the very thick muscular interventricular septum down the right and left bundle branches, and finally out through Purkinje fibers, and it is the Purkinje fibers that's going to directly activate the muscle tissue to contract. For each of these features, you should know its role, and you should know on an electrocardiogram what it's, at what point in the electrocardiogram each of these is functioning. And you should know on an electrocardiogram where each, what point each one of these plays a role. The sinoatrial nodal fire causing the atria to depolarize, and we see that as the P wave. Then the atrioventricular node holds the impulse momentarily, and the impulse is not traveling anywhere, so it's represented as a flat line. Then the impulse begins to go down the interventricular septum, 
we see it as a rise. And then once it hits the apex, it's coming back up the opposite way, and it comes back down, and then it goes back to baseline. This is our QRS complex. This next baseline is known as the ST segment. And the importance of that segment is that's the time that the ventricle is actually squeezing and then eventually ejecting blood. But we'll continue with the waves. When finally ventricle, the ventricles repolarize, then we have the T wave. On the cardiac cycle here, you should be able to identify all of these things. Let's start with ventricular diastole. Diastole is when the ventricle is at rest, so we see it during this, this flat, low pressure time. It's not contracting, it's just at rest. Atrial contraction, that's represented by this little hump right here. We have initiating when we start a beat, we'll ultimately have a P wave at this point, and then the atria will contract immediately after sending a little extra blood into the ventricle. Immediately after atrial contraction, the ventricle will start to contract. That's ventricular contraction. The first thing that happens when the ventricle starts to contract, it happens about this point. I'll sort of make a big circle we have the mitral valve will close. So that way no more blood can come in. That's why the volume is flat here. We have no more blood coming in. It's not gonna go up anymore because we have closed the mitral valve. Then the ventricle develops pressure up until this point where the red line is intersecting with the blue line. At that point, that is when we open our aortic semilunar valve and we begin the ejection phase. The ejection phase is where we see the blood levels going down and finally wanes off. So blood is ejecting out while we're pushing it. And this is where the high pressure is coming along. The ventricle starts to relax and we have at this notch here, the aortic semilunar valve closure. It's also known as the dichrotic notch. Well, the bottom of the dichrotic notch is the aortic semilunar valve closure. The notch is actually this down and back up formation. The mitral valve will open again once the pressure has declined sufficiently about this level, and we can actually see it happens here, because when the mitral valve opens, blood fills up again and starts to fill into the ventricle. While the ventricle is at rest, we're getting more and more blood in it. Peak ventricular systole, that's going to be this number here. And in fact, if we take our number across and say, oh, the peak is at 200, and this junction here, we run this across, and we could say this would be a 125, this person's blood pressure is going to be 200 over 125. So the diastolic blood pressure is 125 millimeters of mercury, the systolic blood pressure is 200 millimeters of mercury. The isovolumic, we have two isovolumic phases. One is a contraction and the other is a relaxation. Isovolumic happens when the both valves are closed. So we have the mitral valve closed and at this point we open the aortic valve. So the time in between, I'm just gonna kind of go by the dashed line and that dashed line represents this dashed line. This will be isovolumic contraction. The next, so this is isovolumic contraction. The next phase is for this, a aortic valve closes, and then here is the mitral valve opening again. So prior to that, it's also closed. So during this time, we have another isovolumic phase. It's also flat down here. So this is our isovolumic relaxation. And diastolic volume. So at the end of the rest is the fullest that the ventricle will be. And systolic volume is the at the end of ejection. So it's basically the emptiest the ventricle should be. So we'll say in this case, it's gonna be 30 milliliters. Stroke volume is the numeric difference between the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. So if we determine that the end diastolic volume is 120 milliliters and the end systolic volume, if we put this as 30, 
is 30 milliliters, then the stroke volume will be 90 milliliters. And that is the amount of blood that was ejected at that beat. Cardiac output, we know that they were given that this heartbeat is 60 beats a minute. So we'll go 60 beats per minute times our stroke volume, which was 90 milliliters essentially per beat. The beats cancel out, so we will go 60 times 90 equals 5,400 milliliters per minute. Also could be 5.4 liters per minute.